and welcome to 101 here at Metro TV. I am Bright, the Nakwesi Amini. And we're coming to you from the Queer Bohima Studios here at Rage in Accra. And my guest today on the show is a lawyer and a member of parliament. I'll tell you who he is after this turn. So he tells me in French is Xavier. He tells me in Spanish is um, Xavier. He says in English is Xavier. And so anyhow he choose to call him, he'll respond. Tonight on 101 is Member of Parliament for Medina Constituency and also Lawyer, Honorable Xavier Susu. Welcome to 101. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I like the fact that you made me understand that. I mean, your name, can re you can respond it. Anyhow, it's mentioned whether uh, Xavier, Xavier, or uh, Xavier. I think uh, I like the Xavier. You know, absolutely. Mm. I mean, actually, um, Xavier is, um, you know, is is a, is is a name originally from France and um, shared by Spanish, and so it comes in all forms. And however it comes, we respond to them. Well, forgive me if I call it Xavier. Me calling her, calling him Xavier. A lot on the show. I think I love the Xavier bit. The Xavier. <laughs> Xavier. It, sounds, it sounds so romantic. Yeah, it comes with it on. It, it, it should know, be interesting. It's kind of like a name from Paris. You know, Paris is a city of love. <laughs> so Xavier. Xavier. <laughs> okay, welcome to what was again, Honorable. Yeah, thank you. I'm so happy to meet you here. Awesome. It's, now, it's, it's, it's really great to be here too. Listen, there's going to be a very, very last conversation. Okay, away from the usual um, political talk tonight here on the show. And we are going to focus on his books. Six books to be launched. And I'm wondering, how does he have the time to go to Parliament, attend to his constituents, and still write six books? Interesting. Now, tell me, before we even start talking about them each, mm. what are the names of these six books? And why, why six books in the first place? Well, um, okay, so uh, the first book uh, is Love Lifted Me From The Street. Mm. Uh, originally written in 2008, and then um, uh, now revised. Uh, and then I have Homeless, originally written in 2012, and also now revised. Then the new books on the block are, or the, I mean, the newest mm -hmm. are the uh, Being the Change, I Am the Street Lawyer, Guilty Unto Proven Innocent, and Pro Bono Lawyer Without Honor. So okay. these are the six books that... Um, we are launching, God willing, on the 11th of November in Parliament. Great. And so it's, 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 the convention tonight is going to be based on his books, actually. So let's say it's a review show tonight on 101. And let's start with being the change. So I had the opportunity to have an, uh, an executive summary of all the books. And to tell you the truth, I have been reading them over and over and over again. Mm. It makes me want to wonder, like, if, People have opportunities and they tend not to use it properly. That's I can true. say you almost didn't have any, mm. but then you now have a lot to give to others. Absolutely. Let's start with being the change. Mm. Tell me about this. Being the change uh, essentially chronicles values and ideas about we becoming the, the very changes that we want in society. You know, it's not enough to just be on the fence and be screaming that we want this let's improve our community, let's take away corruption, let's be law-abiding, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is that the book takes you on a journey of someone who believes in change and who mm -hmm. lives that change. And so I consider really my involvement in politics as part of a change agenda. Before joining politics, I was doing human rights mainstream and... I was following many, many cases of human rights, and I've seen violations that I wish something could be done about. But of course, merely wishing something would be done about them does not guarantee that something would be done. So now being part of the process, being in parliament, and gives me an opportunity to now live out these change ideals that I mm. believe in. So for example, through uh, my coming into uh, office as a member of parliament, we began the Madina Job Centre, a very innovative idea which has connected more than 5,600 people to jobs already in less than two years of my uh, coming into office. Um, if you look at our best teacher, I mean, our teacher, our education outreach, yeah. the best teacher award, giving out a card to a teacher, it's never happened before. And it, it was, I mean, 
an innovation. Look at our water for all projects, for all basic schools. Um, if you look at our medical outreach, and you look at our Islam project, so almost everything that I bring on board is my idea of the kind of change we need to see in our society. In our society. Then when you come back to Parliament, if you look at the number of uh, bills that I've been championing, right from the abolition of death penalty uh, through, um, through the amendments proposed to the Act 29 and the Armed Forces Act, and then the amendments that are proposed for the Act 29 again for uh, criminalization of witchcraft accusation, mm -hmm. and you, you talk about the law school issues, and then the bills that I have proposed with other colleagues to regularize, I mean, law school education, um, and also to reconstitute the General Legal Council. Mm. I mean, I've heard that almost uh, more than 800, I mean, law students pass are going to be called to the bar. That is phenomenal, and that is history. In our recent time, in our recent, I mean, history, it has never been the case. I mean, it's always been the case that, uh, I mean, uh, less, I mean, lesser numbers are being, you know, admitted to come. But what you did know? you say that, that could have been... Um, based on the agitations that came before the admissions well, were given. Well, agitations are not sufficient. Agitations must be backed by actions. Mm. And most of the agitations that we do can only be backed by law. And so, for example, if we scream that death penalty is a violation of human rights and blah, 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 how, what must be done? Take the steps, take bold. We always, when uh, Abner Denta was mm -hmm. killed, everybody, the nation where went, everybody said, I mean, witchcraft accusation is bad. Something must be done about it, but it doesn't end there. It, 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 it's Until actually it pushed by legislation. We talk about uh, females who are, uh, are defiled and do not have access to uh, med I mean, prosecution because they can't pay for medical, uh, I mean, uh, is it the medical reports? Mm -hmm. Because medical doctors would take between 300 and 1,500 before they issue medical report for a victim. You know, we all complain about it, but at least there's a bill to amend the NHIS Act to introduce a regime that payment for that will be taken care of by, by NHIS. Not only that, for cancerous conditions and, and many more. So the point is that it is not enough believing in the ideals and the ideas of change. You know, mm. you must take steps to become the change that you desire to see in society. And essentially, that is what this book is about. And it chronicles almost... Uh, all, almost all articles that I actually wrote somewhere last year uh, based on the various issues that, you know, uh, were, that confronted the nation, either from economics, judiciary, um, 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 security, and then also most of the things that happened last year, for example, issues that bothers on this demonstration for roads and so on and so forth. All of them are chronicled in here. Sometimes it's important that when the dust settles, reason will prevail beyond or will prevail against emotions. Most of this is when they have people are so emotional, mm. very excited. So you can imagine one of the biggest news that went over this weekend is arrest of lawyer Susu. <laughs> and uh, I read somewhere you have been convicted for and, and, and an amount of no, no, no. Uh, to the I mean, point I mean, the, the, the point is that, I mean, what is news? About a conviction of a, but with a traffic offence, it's no news. But you, you, you were a lawmaking parliament. No, That's no, news to no us. It's no news. Why is that no news? It's no news because, I mean, we are lawmakers, mm -hmm. but we can also fall far of the law. And in any event, you say, I'm not here to even... Is, is, that, is that not what you know, makes the, the news? Is that what, no, no, is that what it, makes no, the news? No, no, it's, it's the fact no, that you're a lawmaker and still no, goes against the law. You know, no human being is infallible. That's the first thing you must understand. And you, it's important for you to understand... I mean, the, the circumstances of our work. And I have a lot of concerns about police work with parliament. I mean, I consider police ap approach to, to um, law enforcement and police, um, will I say, the frontal attitude police have with parliamentarian as a serious indictment on the work of parliament itself. Tell me more about that. Yes, you see, it's very serious because you see, members of parliament are ordinary people who have been voted for specific duties. And you are leaders. Now, now yeah, that's true. And we provide leadership. So this issue that, I mean, we are talking about, what happened? I was from parliament mm -hmm. going to a program back in my constituency. And many people, I mean, ministers of states and others, we're using the sirens, and I used a siren, and that's what I did. 
to clear the road just to make way so I can get into the meeting that had already started before I left parliament. Mm. And I got stopped. When I was stopped, what did I do? I simply said, okay, so what is the problem? They said, well, because you are driving on the wrong side of the road. Were you? I was, but I was using siren to clear the road so I can make it on time for a parliamentary duty. How unlawful or lawful is that? No, no. Well, the lawfulness and unlawfulness is a matter of law. Ordinarily, ordinarily, we won't be here because when a member of parliament is on duty from parliament or is on duty going to parliament, you can't even arrest him. That is how the constitution says. You see, it's either we believe in the laws that we have enacted or sometimes we just play it to the gallery like then there's excitement. What is, what is really exciting about arrest? In fact, the news has gone so viral. People say lawyers were so detained, lawyers were so arrested, lawyers were so convicted. And, and what was shocking about this whole thing is that I have the Ghana Police Service, as untruthful as they can be, leak the first information of arrest of lawyers Susu. And I was so surprised because nobody put me under arrest. I was never arrested. Yes, I was cited for a traffic offense. Mm -hmm. I left my car with the police. The following day, I asked them what must happen. And they said, um, oh, uh, we had instructions to process you to court. No problem. So which court? He said, La Court. I said, no problem. So I came to La Court. I just didn't want to prolong these matters because, look, I have this book. Look, I want to keep my focus. So when I got to La Court, I was questioned about what happened. And I admitted that indeed i used my siren and drove on that side of the road if they consider it as offense no problem i was convicted i paid my fine and i left you, like, you told me earlier that a member of parliament um, you know, on your way to work then having finished that process i come to parliament parliamentary proceedings are going on then my colleagues were coming to me showing me articles at Breaking news, lawyers were so arrested. I'm like, how disingenuous can the police be? I mean, what, 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 what is their interest in lawyers were so I want the police. I want to were, find were you fine? What? Then of course, I paid the fine. How, how much? How much money? 2,400. And that is, that is a very, I mean, I represent many clients in traffic offenses. And that's a very normal, I mean, process. And so, what is a special interest? But, but is that not a bit of a disappointment to know that you as a lawmaker no, found yourself no, in that no, category no, no, of no, people. No, 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 no. It's, it's never a disappointment. And let's not... I mean, I mean, the fact that you're a lawmaker doesn't mean that you cannot fall foul of the law. That's why you must understand. I mean, unless you want to decorate it some any other way. I mean, the point is that I could have challenged the police in several ways. For example, the issues that you are raising whether you are coming from dream guess what when the police stopped my car who provided vehicle it was the police that provided vehicle with two motorcades that escorted me to the meeting they took me all the way from airport so we say that even the arrest was unnecessary no but see my point is i was in duty and so you see and that's that's my point was there even an arrest you know in law there's a process of arrest you see citing a person for Traffic offense doesn't necessarily mean an arrest. What, what does the word arrest mean when it comes to law? You see, or the arrest legalities? is a restriction of a person based on either a warrant or upon a reasonable suspicion of a crime. Here in this case, we're restricted from applying that route. No, 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 no. I was, never, I was not restricted. I was not restricted. You see, arrest, you see, there is a mode of arrest. Arrest is controlled by Act, act 30. And there is a mode in which arrest is effected. The law prescribes the mode in which you effect arrest. And when you effect arrest, you have to admit the person to bail. Mm. Either a self-recognizance bail or somebody will have to sign a bail. Did the police say that they did any of that? Did you hear that? No. Oh. Yes. All right, did the police say they admitted me to bail? Okay, so they arrested me where? And where did they keep me? And how did they leave me? So uh, they arrested me and I still went to my meeting. So after the arrest, then they provided me with an escort, an escort. to the meeting. And then after the meeting, then they, they, they went by themselves. And then, I mean, look, let's face it. 
I think that <clears throat> the current IGP, unfortunately, has turned policing into showmanship. And that is quite unfortunate. In fact, my experience over this weekend, and of course over the last time we had our demonstration and all the issues that came up, actually revealed how an institution like Ghana Police Service, that must work with some dignity, mm. sometimes just goes so low and can lie through their teeth, even in matters like what, what just happened, and spreading half-truths and half falsehoods, and, and I don't know what exactly they intend to achieve with that. And, I mean, Ghanaians should look forward to, I mean, one of the books that you will be seeing next year is The Unruly IGP in the state of Umofia. And it's not as interesting. Yeah, he just generated no, no. a name of a book as a result of what happened to him. No, 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 because, I mean, because no, I love to reflect on things that happen in and around me mm. because they have significant impact, I mean, on me and on my desire for change and on my desire for what I think society, you know, must be. So clearly, um, I think that there is something significantly wrong with our Ghana Police Service. All right, let's go and, back to the and, book. And, and making a mountain out of a molehill is not going to change anything. In fact, what they have done has, in fact, it has not, it has not changed anything about me. I'm, I'm so focused. I'm, I'm so poised. And trust me, I'm even more energized to do more. All right. Now, in your book, yes. um, you mentioned that you've provided about 4,500 jobs for the youth in your community. Tell yeah, me okay. about that. Oh, well, I mean, well, that's being the change. Okay. So, in being the change, um, you know, the Madina Job Center is, um, is an innovation that we introduced even before I became a member of parliament. Mm. And the job center was in answer to the various um, youth unemployment situations that we had in Medina. And so I felt one of the innovative ways to do this was to quickly bring up this project that does a number of things. One, we do job connections, uh, we do entrepreneurship, and then we do skills training. Uh, recently, we've had various models like youth in driving, youth in biking, uh, we have women in mushroom farming, and we have some products that are coming up before the end of the year. Uh, we have going to be special bread from Medina. We special are, we are bread. Special bread. Yeah, bread. Yeah, bread. It's a bread industry we are bringing to the job center. Then we also have a, a Gary processing uh, that is also coming up. So it's a lot that is happening with the job center because for me, it's one of the new ways that we can actually innovate mm. um, and, and provide answers to people that need those jobs. Yes. I, I, I love the, the core picture on that book. Yeah. You in the working gear and the hat and you de, with the two finger in the air like that. Yeah, we must work. And actually, those pictures were pictures from um, uh, the field, actually. I mean, that was part of my infrastructure tour. And we were touring some um, storm drains that were being constructed in Medina West, part of Medina West, Libya quarters. Those works have not finished yet, but they were, they, were, they were work that we did last year, following up on, I mean, inspecting those projects that were ongoing, mm. you know. So, it is just, the picture gives the indication that, look, rise up and work, and rise up and be that change. All right. And I believe that is the inspiration that the book provides. Let's talk about homeless. Okay. Homeless. Are you referring to yourself or the people you've helped on the streets? Well, um... You know, homelessness is a term of art in this book. And it shares very much, I mean, so much inspiration from uh, my own background. And let me be very frank. When this book was published uh, way back in 2012, mm. um, it was accepted as a GES approved book for all public schools. And I sold in excess of 500,000 of the book Homeless. And uh, Homeless has been distributed not only in Ghana, it's been distributed also in the U.S., uh, part of U.K. And um, now it's been revised. And Homeless simply shares my story growing up as a street child and how education played a key role to change my life. So in Homeless, I shared inspirations about how education provides a common platform for both the poor and the rich. So education is the only platform that can make that happen. 
So for a very poor guy like me, growing up from the street, adopted by an orphanage, the only way today I can become a member of parliament is through education. Today, I'm able to make the impact I'm making because of education. So homeless is about education, education, education. education. How education can transform the life of people. Right. And in the revised edition, we've shared various statistics on uh, streetism and homelessness and made some policy proposals on how we can deal with issues of homelessness in Ghana. All right. So, lawyer Savior or just don't have just one more two books. Six books to be launched. Okay. And as we speak right now, we've talked about two. I want to go for record. When we come back, we'll be talking about Love Lifted Me from the Streets and also Guilty Until Proven Innocent. So with us. And so I'm still here with a man whose name can be found in almost all the, all the regions in the world, from France to Spain, back to England, and even here in Ghana. Xavier, Xavier, Xavier. I mean, the one actually he prefers. <laughs> Let's not talk about love with him from the street. You have a lot of love in the book, a lot of love to be given. Absolutely. So, Love Lifted Me from the Street actually is the first edition of me having the boldness to share my life with the world uh, in terms of how I grew up um, from a very modest background, um, living several years on the streets, selling almost everything sellable on the street until the village of Hope Orphanage came in to adopt me from the street. And um, it shares inspirations about how the show of love can transform the life of every person. Mm. So in your community, I mean, right around you, there are many people around you that just showing them love can transform their life. Now, the village of Hope did something very significant. At the time that the village of Hope was actually going to adopt me, I was more than 12 years old. But the orphanage could take only children who were 12 years. But they broke the rules which gives the inclination that, <clears throat> sorry, love actually breaks all rules. It breaks all bounds. So when you show love, there is no extent to which a person, I mean, can go. Mm. It's, it's a limitless platform once you show love. So this book actually shares the inspiration on how love can just transform the life of people. Showing love to people. And we all have the opportunity to show that love to people in and around us. I mean, our, our children, our, our families, and uh, even people who are not like families, you know, we can show love to them, and that can transform their lives. And that is very, very, very important. I, I like how it looks like you, you grew up in love, <clears throat> in as much as um, you, you didn't come from either a father or a mother, but then from an orphanage home, and it was too good for you because it was out of love that you were created for. Let's now talk about guilty until proven innocent. Let's, let's go back to the legalities. I mean, why this book? Well, um, <clears throat> the typical essence of this book uh, is how we have turned the justice system upside down, right? Where people are presumed to be guilty even before their cases are heard. Mm. And that has been the case with many, 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 many cases that I have personally been involved in. I mean, um, when you read Guilty on the Proven Innocent, <coughs> it shares an inspiration of a young lady uh, called Abna Nyamiche. And Abna Nyamiche was in a contractual relationship with a colleague and um, the business just went bad. Now, this colleague had a police officer as the boyfriend. And so, by the use of her connections, mm. they got Abna Nyamiche arrested. And typically of what Ghana police would do, uh, they got her arrested on a Friday. That way, they can keep her on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. and then on Monday, possibly being a holiday. So, Abna Nyamiche never gets to go to court. 
Now, upon arrest of Abna Nyamiche, the police never told Abna Nyamiche the reasons for her arrest and why they were keeping it. Except that, I mean, somebody that knew the police and, and that, 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 some influence over the police got her arrested. Now, in the story of Abna Nyamiche, when eventually the case had to go to court, the investigators got to court at the time that the court had closed. Intentional? Then the investigator managed, with the, with the connivance of the court, to procure a remand warrant to remand Abna Nyamiche. Abna Nyamiche is then sent to Isawan prisons. And even though the warrant of arrest expires, Abna Nyamiche is forever kept in prison, guilty until proven innocent. Even when Abna Nyamiche has not been given the opportunity even to be heard. Which I believe we have a lot of such cases behind bars. Absolutely. Because I remember very well that when I started practice very, very early, one of the things I used to do, which I've shared, a lot of which I've shared in this um, uh, in these books was just going to court and assisting. And I recall very well, it used to be Circuit Court 1. And at the time, it was uh, Justice Francis Aubrey. That used to be the judge there. Now, he's a high court judge. I think, yes, a high court judge now. And I recall one day, I appeared before him in my usual either holding, watching brief or trying to help people. And he actually asked that, would you mind coming later to the court to find the number of discharges I have done? Mm. So I was curious. So I inquired, my Lord, discharges in people who have been, say yes, cases that have been struck out for want of prosecution. Because I believe that even though the cases have been struck out, the prisoners are still in some prisons. And this is because once the people are, Arrested, remanded, no, but we don't have any way of tracking, you know, those people. And when their remand expires and the investigators or the prosecutors do not follow, it gets to a point where the court will have to strike the matter out and discharge the person. So you have the situation where the court has actually discharged the person and yet the person is still at his own prisons. And so as of this violation, you have multiple of them, multiple of them. And typically you have a situation where the media sometimes joins the free to convict people in the public domain even before the court of competent jurisdiction hears their case. So I recall one of those typical cases um, that I did, which has also been shared. Um, it was Charles Entry, yes. The man who was alleged to have gone to the church of His Excellency John Domani Mahama to go and kill him. And when the story came, it was like how my story is going out, like the way the police is all over the place sharing my story. And what were they saying? It was breaking news. Attempted assassination of the president foiled. Then he went internationally. President escapes, you know, assassination. You know, assassin arrested. <laughs> so like, because I know the media love the sensation. Now, once you put in the sensation, the person is already convicted and killed. And in fact, he's already finished. Even before his case will be heard. Mm. So, even though this person, investigations clearly showed. In fact, because, I mean, national security was involved and the guy was taken to his, I mean, his hometown, at, I mean, Bono and Half region at the, at the time. And the, the evidence, in fact, the evidence that was found on the, on the, on the ground suggested that the guy was, I mean, in the night before he goes to bed, he would chain his legs to his motorcycle and so that nobody would steal the motorcycle. Mm. And the guy was, um, I mean, actually sent to a traditional healer so that, you know, because they saw him to be somebody who was mentally ill. Ill. Even though these facts came through investigation, the facts were not made known to the court. Because when the guy was arrested and was asked that, why did you come here? He actually stood there and confessed and said, uh, he has come to kill the president. And he has come to kill the president because when His Excellency President Mills was alive, he promised him that when he, President Mills, is no more, he will become the president. 
and that he doesn't understand why when President Mill passes, his excellency John Dramani Mahama might become president mm. and not him. That's why he said that was his confession. So clearly, that confession must put everybody on the, on the alert. But if your media is not interested in that, they are interested in a, attempted assassination. No, we, we, are, we are still interested in the truth and fact. <laughs> no, you are not. We, we are still interested in the truth and fact. <laughs> let, me, let, me just say, let me just step in from you know, there. You are mostly, I think you are mostly carried away by the sensation because, of course, sensation sells, bad news sells, fake news sells. Like I said, when I go here, people have, have seen messages. But Francis Xavier detained. A lot of, a lot of media houses have posted that. <laughs> Metro TV hasn't done that. So we do a fast check before right. we, we well, put it out there. Yeah, let me be fair to Metro. I mean, Metro has been uh, very... Exactly, give us some credit. Especially, I, I, mean, I mean, your morning show, I think Dr. Randy Abbey has been doing some very great job. Mm. And I think you have been doing some great job too. Not all journalists are that thorough because most times they, they, they feed on the sensation and... I mean, it sells, and so they are all out there, then, you know, feeding on the fake news. And so, so this guy goes to court, and the judge asks him, so, um, you know, okay, so first of all, look at what happened. So the book describes the circumstance very well. So you have the media say attempted assassination. And yet, when you see what goes to court, there is no charge of, you know, like attempted murder or yeah. assassination or maybe treason or something. There was, there's nothing like that. What goes to court is unlawful possession of firearms. So you see, you can go court today. The, the news is still there. But what goes to court is possession of firearms. And then now the guy says, I'm guilty. And they ask him, why? You know, so, he said, so he said, you are guilty. So the court says that, do you understand your guilty plea? Then the man explains and says, that, yes. He's guilty because he actually went there to go and kill the president. And then, re, re, you know, re, I mean, narrated the whole, I mean, his version all over again. So this should automatically put everybody on alert. Mm. However, that didn't happen. He was convicted and sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. That's a mental person convicted and put to prison. Mm. Now, this could be like a, a book that could be used by even law students. In Absol class no, no, and all absolutely. That. I mean, absolutely. And I mean, that is not the only thing. I mean, when you go through the book, for each of the concepts from arrest, abuse of bills, um, I mean, uh, I mean, fake warrants, um, issues of, um, I mean, abuse of, um, I would say, even the judiciary, I mean, abuses in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk about if it also has a research component where there's a publication of research finding on like people's views and opinions on like either the corruption rates in judiciary, police services, and so on and so forth. So it's a holistic work that will benefit not only law students, it will benefit judges, it will benefit police officers, it will benefit people who have general interest in law, it will benefit researchers. And I mean, for me, it's a book for all. Mm. It's, I mean, it's a reader for all. Mm. I, I am a street lawyer. <laughs> a street lawyer. What do you mean by that? Do you do only pro bono? Is that what you're trying to tell me in this book? You being a street lawyer. You only do pro bono? Um, no, 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 no. Um, I, I mean, even the pro bono, I don't know whether I'm still doing it now, but, um, you know. <laughs> you're making me smile. <laughs> it looks like once a pro bono lawyer, always a pro bono mm. lawyer. Because I have, I mean, the, the pro bono lawyer with that honor. We'll discuss more of that. But I am a street lawyer shares a story of a very young, passionate man who moved from the streets to the bar. And having been called to the bar during the pupillage, began to break all the rules of pupillage. Because pupillage is when you are now trying to learn your rudiment and mm -hmm. i must say on this note that um i mean mix, mix i mean lawyer maxwell logan uh from logan and associates where i did my pupillage was one of i mean the topmost inspirations um i mean to me and he probably i mean he was the formative the person who formed me in my formative years when i was a lawyer uh his guidance and even giving me the opportunity to really follow a lot of these violations actually uh, gave me the opportunity to break almost all those rules so that 
whilst a lawyer does stipulate for some six years in some firms, the lawyers never get the opportunity to actually, I, I mean, assert themselves. Uh, I had that chance to assert myself was in court, moving motions and, um, I mean, representing in criminal trials and doing things that ordinarily you would not find lawyers doing. So it gave me the opportunity to learn really quickly. And, and in almost about in the first year of my legal practice or so, I was already in the Supreme Court mm. doing like cases through the Court of Appeal all the way to the Supreme Court. So it gave me more confidence and gave me more strength. So the, the, so the book describes the process of rising from one level to the yeah, other. Yeah. And then it describes the processes of, you know, no lawyer, no, I mean, no law student or no, no, okay, let me put it, no lawyer begins their career with a particular um, um, specialty choice. So we all, nobody, I didn't begin practice as a human rights lawyer. And people didn't begin, uh, be, be, I mean, begin practice as uh, maybe corporate lawyers or begin as, um, um, as constitutional lawyers or however you may want to term them. You know, we began, we all began as general practitioners and I, I pretty much do still do general practice. However, it's important that you carve a niche for yourself as a young law student or a young lawyer coming up. And carving a niche for yourself means I wanted to go the extra mile in those fields. So when I decided to do human rights, the first thing I began doing was legal clinics. And I've shared these things in my book. And in those legal clinics, it was open for everybody to attend. And people used to attend and they'll just share their stories and we find solutions for them. And sometimes then you go to court for them, you know, for free. And it was through the legal clinics that we had a lot of those pro bono cases that we were doing. And so it opened me up to several cases. So there were cases of sexual violations that I was following, and mm. these are shared. I mean, cases where you have maybe uh, maybe situations where like a Catholic priest, you know, may impregnate a young girl yeah. and will not want to take responsibility, and but I have to come in. A Catholic priest. Well, I mean, I've shared a bit of that story in that because I've de I followed so those stories. You know, I mean, violations. I've, I follow stories of police officers violating, defiling children, and police refusing to prosecute people. I mean, I, I've shared those inspirations in the book because I have personally followed those stories. And I've shared stories of, I mean, multiple violations. Not, you know, I mean, I mean, these institutions are institutions of trust. And so when they breach the trust, you want to hold them accountable. So you see them in this, I am the street lawyer, sharing all this inspiration not only religious violations, political violations, and so on and so forth. So essentially, that is what the I Am The Street Lawyer is about. Until by doing that, I became so common to the common, common people. Like, mm. So being common to them became so common to the extent that one day I was in court and, and I would never forget that day when someone came to the high court to ask about me from me he, did, he didn't know you were you at the yes. time and so like that struck me because i asked myself that what is the probability that somebody will be coming to look for you from you <laughs> so and there are several lawyers that we all going, came to me and said i'm looking for that lawyer who represented a teacher who was jailed uh, for 15 years and then acquitted the teacher uh, at the supreme court and I mean, the thing, I mean, it just fell on me at Tommy, so, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I just gave her our office line because I was not too sure. You know, because I was suspicious even at that time because I know people were following me. Everybody was looking for your downfall, like a typical Ghana, Ghanaian attitude. When people are rising, we don't want to rise with them. Mm. We are looking for where can we, <laughs> where can we get them? I mean, you know, more, where can you we know? get them? Uh -huh. Like the unruly IGP book would describe, you know. So things like that. So, I mean, it's, it's a very significant uh, thing that as a, as, a, as a society, we must understand and right. must accept that this is how it works. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I want everybody to know that in that book, it ended with a statement, I still remain the street lawyer. Mm. And, and that brings me to uh, the pro bono lawyer without honest. I mean, having helped several prisoners um, go through their case and also hitting the roadblock back in 2017. What exactly was that? Well... Again, I think that, um, I mean, it was so clear. Now, looking back, I mean, the conspiracy to end my legal practice was so clear. I mean, I just feel there were some people who thought, oh, 
you know, like what the guys will say in feature, you know, like I've been there in feature, mm. like because I remember when I appeared before the General Legal Council, some of the things that, that were said, which most of which I've shared in pro bono with that honor, and I've shared the story as it is. You know, you have the panel of the General Legal Council making statements like, you have turned yourself into an Abu last chaser. Today, Marco Pepe case, you are following it. Uh, military <laughs> brutality, you are following it. Uh, this is, you are following it. I'm like, I mean, so what's your, what is your own? I mean, what be your own? I mean, so if somebody has made himself an ombudsman man and people are violating and he's chasing them, what, I mean, how does that concern you? Yeah, people make statements like, we don't blame you. Instead of the media interviewing uh, uh, experienced people like us, they follow small, small boys like you, you know? So, I mean, you have all kinds of insinuations that clearly suggest that some people are just out there to, to get you, but you know- And, and, and it's making you claim your honors. Where are my honors? Give it to me. Is that what's happening right well, now? Well, you know- Do, the, do you the, feel left out or forgotten? You know, the, the honest truth is that people don't know that honor comes from God. You see, honor comes from above. And God will all, always honor, you know, those who would honestly, you know, and, and conscientiously work without fear or favor and without any discrimination and without any <laughs> desire to work only for the sake of honor. Now, when you read this book, the book demystifies the quest for honor. There are many people in Ghana mm. who are doing practically nothing and yet want to be honored for them. There are people who are so loud and yet they are empty. There are people who, who want to be celebrated for no work done. But you see, honor is given to the deserving. All right. And honor comes from above. All right. Let, I'm, I'm sorry, but then we're out of time. I, know, I mean, right? the, it, it, the conversation ends when it's getting more interesting. I know. Forgive me. <laughs> so, yes, lawyer Savia Susu is out with six different books. The first one being. Love lifted me off the street. Homeless, I am the street lawyer. Guilty until proven innocent. I love that book. Being the change and the final one that almost my favorite, my, 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 my new favorite, the, 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 the pro bono lawyer without honest. Interesting one there. Thank you so much for coming. Before you go, this, this, this placards here, tell me about them. Tell me about them and let's show them to the cameras what exactly they are. Well, so um, these ones are, um, they are meant to uh, reserve a seat at the launch, and so, hmm. if, so this this is a camera. Oh, this is my camera. Yes. <laughs> so if you are you wanted to book a place at the launch because we have very very limited um, um, space at Parliament where we are doing the launch, uh, invitations have been sent all around. So you want to book a place, uh, you want to have a package. We have various packages. Uh, we have the gold package. We have the um, the diamond package, we have the, uh, the bronze, uh, the silver package, before we have the bronze package. You may want to subscribe to any of them. Uh, by taking any of these packages, you reserve a seat for yourself. And so make sure you join us. Um, that does come with uh, the book? Oh, yes. Actually, it comes with the entire six books. Entire six books? Yeah. All the regardless books. of the package you are. You are no, 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 regardless are. of the package. I mean, oh. I mean, so many have gone for, I mean, I mean, you have 1,000 cities for the entire six books. You have 2,000, you have 3,000, you have 4,000, you have 5,000. Show love. Fact, some can huh? do more than that. So please, show love. I mean, writing is not easy. So please, I mean, encourage us to write more. Because next year is going to be very, very interesting. You have no idea the kind of books that are coming out next year. And so these are just the beginning ones. And um, next year is going to be super interesting. Yeah, and I'm waiting for the, um, the, the, the other one, the, um, the IGP. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. The, well, the they're, only, they're only IGP in the and, state of Mufia. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now quickly, I mean, the, 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 the fuse between Shatter Ali and um, um, his former manager, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bulldog, now Bulldog, yeah, yeah, yeah. he made a statement that he could be held for defamation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know. <laughs> a, a very quick one, please. No, the point is that, I mean, this feud really, I don't know where this feud is going, but I think that sometimes they are just for the uh, social media uh, hypes. And but these that. are strong allegations of murder. Well, well it's that, so that's the point. So, you know, if you make a strong allegation and then, I mean, of course, you may have to come to court to prove it. And, um, but, I mean, if I were a bulldog, I really would just walk and just... You see, sometimes these things are just distractions. So, so where does bulldog stand? Does it stand with a um, guilty until proven... 
And obviously, obviously, if you see the processes that it took him through, he was presumed to be guilty before he now. He needs your book. He, need, he needs that you're book. You're a bulldog. You need this yeah, book. He you need that to book. read it. Guilty and I think that Shatter needs to read because the reason why Shatter needs to read this book is that actually it will help him to put some of his you know thoughts in perspective. Okay, right? let, let's, let's end yeah. it here. <laughs> let, let's end it here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I'm really grateful for your time with us here. So right. six books to be, to be launched. I mean, go for any of the gold, whether the gold, the silver, the bronze, or what about this? Support a brother, okay? I mean, like you mentioned, writing isn't easy. Intellectual property is not easy to come by one. And thank you so much for watching One on One here with me, Bryce and Aqui Seven. I've been here with a man whose single name cut across from France to Spanish to England. I mean, ex Xavier, ex Xavier, and Xavier. Honorable lawyer, Xavier Sosu. Thank you so much. I am Bryce and Aqui Seven, and this is One on One.